Unlike in Fire Emblem Engage, we are going to enable a follow-up on Smash Weapons. Welcome to my follow-up video on Smash Weapons. All right, so what can Smash Weapons do? Like, how can they be used? So there's other use cases aside from just enemy phasing. So for example, if you want to make some kind of absolutely cracked reprisal plus sword power five holdout plus 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 build, you can do that. You can also do things like this. You can walk up to a bunch of dudes, engage, Blazing Lion with Georgios, and demolish them. <laughs> so here's a, here's a use case of Smash Weapons. Engage abilities, especially things like Roy or anything that's multi-hit. You can deal massive damage, and if you stack Reprisal and Sword Power, you can straight up one-shot dudes. Now this Alir was able to one-shot two enemies with uh, without Reprisal triggering. So with Reprisal plus triggering, I would have killed this armor as well. Now this is on my five man run, so some of my units are really cracked already, but you can see the power 89 <laughs> physical attack. Now to be fair, my other weapons are also quite powerful. So it's not like uniquely that much stronger, but even just having Georgios for certain engage abilities, for example, you can one round things or deal substantially higher damage. So there's still a great benefit to using smash weapons in this case. Now what if we don't want to one round these guys with a smash attack or with a big AOE? What if we just want to deal some damage, start enemy phasing, and you know, get reprisal plus going? So one thing I can do is take some damage. So you can take damage, especially if you're on a fast unit. Swords actually don't weigh that much. So if you have like a great sword or, or i'm sorry a blade or georgios you won't get doubled very often especially if the unit's fast so you can actually kind of rely on that this inability for enemies to double because you can still be fast you don't have to be slow with your two-handed weapons we'll call them okay so let's observe the enemy phasing with a great weapon with reprisal so this is the idea right or an idea you have a bonded shield unit who can completely nullify attacks and has high enough dodge to not get hit, or you can use chain guarders, or you can just use a general or something very tanky. And with reprisal plus and holdout plus plus, you can tank. So you don't necessarily need the bonder, but it's nice. But look at the damage. Obviously, these are super power level DLC units, but you can achieve similar levels of damage with, you know, average hard carry units with reprisal plus. Reprisal plus at low HP values, plus smash weapons is absolutely cracked and can easily one round things, or even really, not even just one round them, it can one shot them, which is very fun. Now you could also run something like Vantage Reprisal Plus. So if you wanted to have, uh, you know, like a chain garter for like a range attack. So let's say there's like one or two range enemies, you could have chain garters, you could have bonded shield. Uh, you could also run holdout. So in, this ca in the case of this build, we have huge damage from sword power and reprisal plus and then also holdout allows me to tank so that i can be a little bit more risky than i should be otherwise here's another build archetype you could use with great weapons so in the case of silver great lance i have lucina on it for the avoid plus 30 and then when tamara is standing next to some a supports she gets pretty high avoid rates now what you would want on this reprisal plus might not be the best skill for this because essentially what you want is to be accurate with the weapon and to have high avoid, and enemies are gonna have a hard time hitting you because your avoid is high, uh, but you could run reprisal with this. Now, lance agility or sword agility could be good on a build like this. You could also run some kind of strength increase. Reprisal could be used here as long as you start taking damage, so you could seek out an accurate enemy, for example, to start taking on damage. For one of the final builds, we'll go over essentially just throwing Ike on the unit and being fast enough to not get doubled and just YOLOing enemies right in the face. <laughs> so you just pop Ike. In this case, you wouldn't want to run evasion increase. You just want to run damage uh, because if you're tanky enough, you can just smack them outright. Now, if it's on a unit that's tanky enough to, even if they get doubled, tank the damage, that's great. If it's on a unit who's fast, you're usually better off doubling them if you can, but in this case, I can't double this thief. So uh, you can uniquely benefit from using a Great Lance against that thief. Now against this dude, 
I can borderline one round him with my actual mainline weapon, so it's situational as to how good the Great Lance is, but if the unit isn't fast enough, like let's say you're either, you're either like a little bit below their speed or at their speed, so you're not doubling them anyways, you might as well go for a Great Lance build, and this would allow you to run other passives like Vantage, uh, you could run Holdout, so you could do like a Holdout Vantage Ike build. Now you will get Wrath from running Ike, so you could try to go for some crits, but Great Weapons don't have an 8 crit rate, so it's going to be difficult to get their crit up, you'd have to use an engraving that would do that and then you're looking at some damage loss but you could hit like 50 percent crit rate pretty easily with like a wrath ike build just with engravings uh, so yeah that's pretty much it for this one definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this i did want to do a video covering some of the great weapons peace